Hello there, I'm Tom from Smart Aerials and in this video I'm going to show you how to connect your Sky Plus HD box to your TV or anything else that uses these type of connections uh, for the optimum picture, for the best possible picture and the best possible experience and the best possible sound for that matter. Uh, and um, there's lots of reasons might you, want to, you might, might be a bit overwhelmed by what, what, you know, what's, what, how many connections have you got, oh, what goes where, uh, and you, you probably don't know what the, you might not know what the best one is. Um, and you, or you might have lots of equipment and you're running out of connections on your TV so you're going to have to be a bit creative and use a different type of one. Well this is going to show you how to do it the best possible way for your skybox and it's also going to show you uh, what the second best way is and what the third best way is. So there's going to be a natural hierarchy to things uh, and you'll be um, so much more knowledgeable than I thought in this video, <laughs> I hope. Uh, so, actually I'm going to be moving this camera back, back and forth quite a bit just to explain what I'm doing. It'll make sense but it might be a bit jumpy for time, a short period of time, I apologise about that. Um, so let's begin. Uh, I'm going to show you to begin with what we've got in the back of our skybox. Uh, uh, so it will further explain what we're doing. So if I bring the camera over here, I'll just angle it towards there. You see on the back of here, we've got a HDMI connection which we've already got a lead in. We've got an RF connection, which is like an aerial type connection, it's, got, it's like an aerial out. And we've got a SCART, and we've got the, these ones here. We've got red, white and yellow, that's like an RCA connection, otherwise known as phonos. Uh, we've got some an optical and a, a coaxial one here, these are sound. These are data, so we're not worrying about that, that's an Ethernet connection, USB, telephone line, RS232 for control and stuff like that, but we're not going to worry about them, we're just going to worry about the, uh, the AV connections, which are the ones I explained there, which was the, the um, I think we're back where we were there. Yeah, so that, that, we're just going to worry about the AV ones, which was the SCART, the HDMI, the, um, the RF connection and the, the phono connection there. Um, and to begin with, so for the least, the least popular way of doing this, I'd say, so I'm just trying to get you back over there, would be over RF. Now you, you're going to do, the, the way this one works is you, take the aerial connection and you tune it into your TV and because it's an analogue signal you have to tune it on the analogue side of your TV which going forward they're probably going to have less, less and less TVs with analogue tuners because everything's gone digital these days but this connection uses the analogue. Uh, you may already be familiar with this, this way of doing it if you've got a Sky playback system where you can watch your skies in other rooms, uh, maybe with a magic eye. Uh, we've got another video on how to set that type of stuff up by the way if, you, if, you, if you're interested. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. So we've got the lead in. We're coming out of the RF1. We've got RF1, we've got RF2, we've got an aerial in. So one's in, so we're coming out of the RF1. And I'm just going to grab the remotes here. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to go to the analogue side of my TV. Now all TVs are different, so this process might not be exactly the same for you. Um, some TVs you have to go through the source, some people TVs you have to press like a special Panasonic, you might just have to press TV again, it'll rotate between. Um, I can't help with all TVs because there's so many different ways of doing it, but on this one we have to go to the source button, which is that button there, and we have to go down to ATV there, and we've gone to, I've already tuned this in, so I'm going to, I'm going to show another channel, so we've got nothing basically, we've got, we've got nothing there, so to get it up on the screen we're going to have to tune it, you can run an auto scan on analog, uh, but just, I'm just going to show you this, because I know the frequency that Skybox is outputting, um, I'm not going to um, do that, I'm just going to tune it manually, so uh, go to menu, set up, manual tuning, there, oh, one point, store that. So now we've got the Skybox picture running over the TV aerial connection on the TV, so it's going on the aerial input on the TV. Um, and you might not be able to see it, I'm just going to get rid of that. You might not be able to see it, but it's a bit blurry. It's, it's, not, it's not great. Uh, it, actually, if you've got an older type CRT, CRT TV, this might look a bit better. If you've got a big, flat, new, modern, widescreen TV, this is probably going to look even worse. Um, and if you've, uh, incidentally, if you've got a, a TV aerial in here, that would loop back up to the TV. So you could retune the TV on, on, um, on digital, and then you could have this on one, one side, on the analogue, and then you can have the TV on the digital. Uh, if that itself can bring imperfections into the TV, a uh, few, few ways, you might just have a really poor, like, noisy signal, uh, or you might have a TV aerial transmission too close to the analogue or on top of it, in which case you're going to have to change the RF on the um, skybox, which I'll again, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Um, I'll put that in the links below if, you, if you're wondering. 
so if it's a bit snow and a bit grainy, uh, it's a good thing to try try another RF channel. But uh, it doesn't actually look that bad here, but it, it's not it's not great. So that's that's the least. You know the, the the worst way of doing it, should we say? So we can still watch Sky, but there's better ways of doing it. So the next way I'm going to show you. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to bother with the Scarp connection because it's so similar to the um, the red, white, and the yellow, the RCA connection. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, Scar is actually capable of a, bit, a little bit more, but I'll, I'll explain as, as I go along. I'm to put those remotes there. So are they going to stay there? Probably not. Carry the balance, that'll probably drop off in a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just to further explain what I'm doing, I'm just going to show you the connections on the side of the TV. Hopefully, you'll be able to see them there. Where are we? Can you see them? So, here, oh, where well, I'm putting miles off here. So, you see those the red, white, and yellow? So, that is, and there's like an AV3 there. That, that's where they go. It's pretty self explanatory. Behind there, we've got the HDMI and stuff like that, also. Uh, let's get back there. So I'm just going to sort of colour match basically. So red, white and yellow to red, white and yellow. Let's get the lead, which I've got here already. Now if you're wondering what these do, the yellow is the video. The white is, I know the white and red, they're, they're uh, stereo sound, basically left and right sound. Um, you, do, you can get other ones which work with... Red and white, so that'd be your sound anyway, but then you've got three more, so instead of a yellow one, you've got red again, then you've got green, and then you've got blue, and what that is, that's RGB. So that sends all the video information on one, on one lot. But if you, if you separate the colours and transmit them up to the TV uh, over separate you know, cables, you'll actually get a better picture. So RGB is a bit better than normal PAL PA video. Um, there is another extension of this, it's not very common, is the S video connection, which again you'd need the red and, and the and the and the white. You'd have a different type of connection for S video. What that does, that separates the the luminance and the chrominance. There's a technical way of putting it. It's the brightness and the colour. So that will give you a better picture. Not as good as RGB, but better than just that. Um, but they're all they're all pretty much the same idea. This this is an analogue connection, so um, this in itself will bring imperfections in the signal because this is all just better. The, the broadcasting techniques that digital TV uses is designed to get rid of the imperfections. That's the, that's the, whole, that's the whole point of it and get it into this room. Um, and the, the, it's, the signal is coming from the satellite dish, beam down from space to your satellite dish, all digital, and then goes to Skybox, which is digital compatible, and then you're going to ruin it all by putting an analog connection to your TV. But I'm just going to show you what's what. Um, just for your reference, SCART is also analog. So that's now in. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna swap the TV over. Here, I don't need the SCART one. And we're gonna to pop to AV3 because on the back here it's got a little it's got a little number there, AV3, that's what it's called on our TV. So if I swap over to that, so it's one from ATV to AV3. So we've got we've got the sky picture. So I, don't think, I don't think you can quite see the picture that well. Let's go back there. Um, we've got the sky picture again. It, it's it's not great. It's not the the TV's capable of so much more. Um, TV's capable of so much more. Uh, but this this might get you out of trouble. So you might have a few bits of equipment, and this is the only way you can do it. In which case, you go for that way. Or the SCART lead. Uh, it's just worth knowing when you've got TVs up on walls, it's one of the reasons I didn't put the SCART lead is in because it's quite difficult to fit them in. Because if they come out the back, they're so big and bulky, to get them to fit in, you have to stand the TV so far off the wall um, that you might as well just put one of these leads in. So that's, that's why I'm not going to have the SCART lead as well. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not great, it's, it's okay, it's, but it's not great. Um, but going to the best, the best, most optimal way of doing things would be the via the HDMI connection. I'm going to turn it off. So. Hop, disconnect it. Um, so this is the HDMI stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface, and what this is, it just it's just all digital. So it goes digital from dish to box, digital box, digital from TV, and then uh, the TV can do what it wants of it. And it depends on your TV and your box on the sort of resolutions you're going to get. So uh, there's HD isn't HD. You've got different standards. Oh God. So when it first HD first came out, it was sort of 720p or 720i, uh, depends on the way it's scanned. 
but then that moved on to 1080i and 1080p which is considered full HD I don't understand what full because you can always do better <laughs> uh, now full HD is a really good picture but then as time's gone on now we're, now we're moving on to 4k and stuff like that which the high definition interface most of it is com compatible with high definition and, and that's the good thing about it is it can always be expanded they, they keep releasing new standards for HD uh, I think one HDMI 2.0 at the minute um, but the, the previous versions were HDMI 1.4 and it's just that as you've got better pictures and better sound and stuff like that the, the amount of data that needs to sort of be, go along that connection we need to improve that as well so that they, you, sometimes you have to upgrade your leads to make sure it's compatible especially over long distances um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in now, so I'm going to put the HDMI lead in, I'm going to turn my skybox on, and I'm going to tell the TV, actually, has it done it for us? Let's have a look at that. Okay, it's gone to HDMI 1, because it's, this TV's recognised that the HDMI cable's gone in. Not all TVs do that, it's, that's, a, that's a software thing, not a hardware thing. Scott leads are designed to work that way, they've got a little pin in them, which tells it to override what is on the TV, but not all TVs do that, so... Um, just bear in mind what's happened there might not happen in your case. But if it hadn't, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go to Source, and then we were down at AV3, which was the RCA cable, phono leads, uh, and we're going to go to HDMI 1. When it comes up, because it's digital, there's always a bit of a delay on it. And that's our best possible picture that we can get with our Skybox. So that's the best way of doing things, the optimal way of doing things. Um, the TV is it's not a particularly new TV, it's just one we've got in our office here. If it was um, a better TV, it would get a better picture. Um, but that's, that's the best way of doing it. Certainly, if you've got the option, do it with the HDMI. And going forward with the new SkyQ boxes, they've only got HDMI outputs on them. Uh, it does mean you're going to have to have a HDMI compatible TV. Uh, if you bought one in the last 10 years, you'll be fine. But um, some of the old TVs don't have them, so you might have to go back to a SCART lead or a phono lead or something like that. Uh, uh, and also about the SCART lead, they don't have them in America. I think you call them the Euro connector if you're watching from over there. Um, you would have the phonos, wouldn't you? So, uh, well, that's it. So that's how to connect your Skybox for the optimum picture, for the ultimate TV experience. Uh, and from there on in, it's, it's all down to TV to see how good it gets. It's all down to your box. See how good it gets. The box can't do 4K, the TV can't do 4K, but if you wanted 4K, you'll do it this way. Uh, so I hope you like this video. I hope it's of some use to you. I hope it's uh, saved your day. I hope it's saved you money. Call an expert out to come do this for you because you really can do it yourself. Um, if you do have any questions, please put them in the section below. Please do give it a like. Um, to stay up to date with more videos like this, please do. Please, 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 please subscribe to our YouTube channel um, where there's lots more stuff like this. Uh, I've already mentioned two other videos that we've got on there, so if you want to catch up with them, go do that now. Uh, and that's it. So I'm Tom Smart from Smart Aerials. Bye for now.